Let's look at the plan for the day, and then I'll take you through exactly what we are going to do. The plan will be that we look at the galvanic cell, and we'll find out what's the structure of it and how do we write the cell notation. Also, we look at the two electrodes, so that's the anode and the cathode, and which processes take place there, oxidation, reduction. Then we'll meet an old buddy of ours, the standard hydrogen electrode. That is the standard of zero volts, and we'll see how we apply it. Then we've got to make a calculation of the cell potential of any two half cells that we get. And lastly, we'll be talking about three to four minutes about equilibrium in the galvanic cell. After that, we switch over to the electrolytic cell today. Now, most of the work you know already, so I will move faster today, but those schools that have logged in today, I ask you to send me as many answers to my questions that we'll be doing. The electrolytic cell then, picture here, we'll look at the structure. Again, we look at the processes, what happens at the electrodes, that is the conductors specifically, and then we look at four applications. Before we go there, let me first double check with you. Do you know what an electrolyte is? Of course, an electrolyte is a salt whose aqueous solution, a salt in solution that can conduct electricity. There we go. It's a salt in solution. And we normally make this solution from salts. We can also make it from acids and bases. But here are some of the solubility rules that you need to remember because examiners can ask you to choose an electrolyte. So here we go. All the salts of sodium, potassium, and ammonium are very soluble. So anytime you want to take a salt, I'd rather take one of these three. Sodium chloride, for instance, potassium chloride, for instance, potassium nitrate, and so forth, and ammonium salts as well. The second one, all nitrates, so you can add nitrates to any of those, are very soluble. Number three, all sulfates are also soluble, except these ones here. So watch out for them. Watch out for this one specifically. The examiner sometimes asks you, why can't we use barium chloride, for instance, in our salt bridge? Then you need to remember, because barium sulfates is insoluble. And then number four, most chlorides are soluble, except those and one or two of others. And lastly, and remember, these are only the main rules. Uh, make sure that from grade 10 and 11 that you actually go and read up your solubility rules. In other words, which salts are soluble, which ones you can use as electrolytes. And most hydroxides are insoluble, and please read the note on page 28 of your telematics book immediately. Right, here we go. Number one, let's look at the galvanic cell. We're going to look at the structure and the cell notation. Here's a picture of such a cell. Nice, sir. Do you know all the labels? Let me find out. Do you know that this part, this beaker, plus this metal, this electrode, and this solution, the electrolyte, is called the zinc half cell. This is a zinc half cell. A cell is something, is a beaker with an electrode and the electrolyte in it. This side is there for the copper half cell, consisting of one, two parts. And then we have a salt bridge. Of course, we must also ensure that in a salt bridge, we actually have a soluble salt, like sodium, remember our rule number one? And our rule and number three, all sulfates are also soluble, especially of those three, sodium, potassium, and ammonium. L then I want to ask you this question. What are these two salts called that are in here? Of course, they are the electrolytes. We normally just indicate that part of the salt, of the electrolyte we indicate and we work with, and also just that part. But this is zinc sulfate is the electrolyte, and copper sulfate is the electrolyte on this side. Another question for you. Here goes. Do you recognize this writing here? Zinc is separated from zinc ions or zinc sulfate, if you want to. There you see it there. 
and there is a salt bridge between the two and on this side we get copper ions in solution from copper sulfate in solution and of course this is the concentration and that is separated from the copper electrode on that side which is then a solid so in short we write it this way zinc dash today on the to, to indicate the boundary then the zinc ions so it's zinc boundary zinc ions zinc boundary zinc ions this side copper ions boundary boundary means or phase means that's a solid and now we are in an aqueous solution so it's copper ions phase in other words different thing copper ions in solution different now that means we are now with a solid and that is copper and this side according to international uh, agreement we normally have the anode on this side but not always and here we have the cathode on the side this is the cathode and that is the anode this is the place where the reactions or half reactions will take place so two half cells make up the complete galvanic cell two half reactions you can actually see the half reactions zinc becomes zinc ions copper ions become copper you can actually see it here one last question on this diagram before we go off what is the energy conversion in this galvanic cell of course the energy conversion is in this direction that means we get energy from here and that energy along with the electrons go out there and we can use the energy we can harness it and then we say it is the chemical energy the energy in chemicals in their bonds in their movement all this kind of energies and we put it onto electrons and electrons take it around and we can use it like in a torch battery for instance we can do that okay now i think learners that you have a good idea and you probably know most of the answers uh, you probably know most of the answers to those questions that they've asked now let's study the half reactions uh, well and look at the microscopic scale quickly and see what actually happened there let's go number one I'm going to look at the half cell. Here's the one half cell, which is the zinc, and the zinc electrolyte half cell, which is, called, which is on this side. And then we have the copper ions, copper half cell on the right-hand side. And, of course, the zinc is the anode, and the copper ions is the cathode, because that is where the reduction is going to take place. Here we go. There's a little picture for you. Zinc becomes zinc ions. And when it's attached to another half cell it will release electrons so let's quickly see a few things about this one what do we know about this we know that zinc is the reducing agent because it's going to lose electrons zinc is going to be oxidized so the oxidation of reaction takes place in the side and then what else can we say this zinc metal there we see zinc metal will give us electrons it donates electrons so we call zinc the reducing agent because he's gonna allow this other one to get those two electrons and of course the other half reaction or other half cell is where the copper ions accept the two electrons from zinc if they are connected by an external circuit and a salt bridge in the middle and then the copper ions will get the two electrons from the zinc and then copper will deposit it here so this will become heavier this will become lighter in mass lose electrons gain electrons and copper is deposited onto this electrode on the side now let's look at a microscopic scale quickly to see if we understand exactly what is happening here here is zinc in zinc sulfate zinc in zinc sulfate and we watch this side here's an enlargement of what happens these are the zinc atoms zn solid zinc atoms and what happens to the zinc atoms let's see the zinc atoms go into solution there we go they go into solution there we go and it gives us two electrons and there are the electrons electrons move up in other words this is a conductor this electrode and we call because this is the loss of electrons we call this oxidation now we say 
because there's no other half cell connected to this we say the zinc solid is in equilibrium so this is in equilibrium the, the we will move this way forward and backwards all the time because the metal is in equilibrium with its solution the metal in equilibrium with its solution but there's a difference because electrons can be transferred but it cannot be measured by a voltmeter because a voltmeter only measures differences in potential now the next step we have shown you the zinc before and here's the one for copper electrons come down by the external circuit from the top there by the high resistance voltmeter and it comes into the copper cathode into the copper there bring in the electrons and the copper ions in solution from copper sulfate they grab it there's the copper sulfate it grabs it and becomes copper and now the stage line and then of course we add the two together i take that one in front that one that one in front there we go i add the two together and i make an arrow and then i write the one after the arrow and the other one after the arrow and that is my complete net reaction without the electrons these two electrons have been used up on this side so i cancel them out this i call my net reaction you need to be able to do this i'll ask more questions as we go along this afternoon now i've told you i've told you uh, learners that we find that there is an a movement of electrons and why would electrons move let's quickly look at my slide that i have ready for you the electrons simply move because from the zinc that releases the electrons copper would like to grab them so this is a loser this is a winner this one loses electrons this one gains electrons by nature that is how they work that is how they react with one another the one like to grab electrons the other one like to lose electrons and when those electrons run out here and then our voltmeter will measure it and we see it's 1,10 of course there's a little cell bridge and that difference between the two cells that is what a voltmeter can measure and we call that that's the potential difference or the cell potential that is what it is now let me show you where we actually see it on this table table 4b this is the top half only there's hydrogen there i can see all the cell potentials given but you notice that all of them are negatively marked what does that mean it means that relative to this one this one would rather lose electron zinc relative to this one that's what this table and these negative signs are telling us let me take another one for you let me go to table 4b the lower half of the table there is my hydrogen or my hydrogen ions and they reduce to give us hydrogen gas we take that value as zero i'm coming back to that now and here we see a positive values what do the positive values mean the positive sign means that relative to that one in comparison to that one we find that this substance for instance tends to accept electrons in other words copper ions would like to accept the electrons to become copper so they are therefore strong this is rather a stronger oxidizing agent oxidizing agents on this side reducing agents on the other side now here is our standard electrode potential uh, that means our standard hydrogen electrode with which we are going to compare and find all those values i've just shown you but when we work in laboratories we must have standard conditions and you'll find this on page 26 and what are the standard conditions normally the first three the concentration in here must be one mole per decimeter cube one mole of hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid remember those h plus we just had now in the red column our temperature should be at 25 degrees celsius please remember this and our pressure should be one atmosphere or 101 kilopascals of pressure if we have gases involved do we have a gas here yes 
hydrogen comes in and the hydrogen ions are in here. Now this is our standard. In other words, we get those previous values, we measure it against this one or this one against the others. I'll show you now. And if we do measure it, we must make sure there is no current and we use a high resistance voltmeter if we do that. Now, the next step is very important for you to remember, and that is that if we go and we go look at what we have coming up now, then we'll see exactly how we obtain those values on the table 4B that I've just shown you. In other words, we're going to use the standard hydrogen electrode that I've shown you, connected to copper half cell, connected to a zinc half cell, any other half cell, and then we can see how we can find the cell potential or how we can find the electrode potential only for one half cell. Let me show you what I mean. So here we have a setup now. The hydrogen half cell, the standard uh, hydrogen electrode, which has platinum in it, by the way, as a conductor, and the surface onto which the gas can react, and our concentration is one mole, and our temperature is 25 degrees, and platinum is our surface for the hydrogen to react on, rho three comma, and that is separated in another phase, that is our solid and gas, a different phase, the liquid now. Different phase, liquid, different phase, gas, and solid platinum. And we see if we connect it to copper, our voltmeter gets a reading of a positive 0,34. Now what does that mean? The positive sign means that this one would rather gain electrons from this solution, from this half cell. This half cell, copper, the electrode would like to compete and then win electrons. So electron flow will be in this direction. So my question is, what does the positive value mean there? It means that relative to this one here, to the hydrogen ions, this metal and its ions would tend to accept electrons. That's what that means. Let me give you another example, and that's where we get the reading from. So we have our zero reading, and then we measure this one, and we get 0.34, and that's how it's on our table. Let me go to the next one. Here we've got the same standard, but this time we don't have copper. We have zinc electrode in a zinc electrolyte. And notice our reading, minus 0, 0,763. Minus, minus, minus. Ah, it speaks about the electrons. Watch it. The direction is not in that way, but it actually tells us now that if it is 0, 0,76 and it's a 0, that relative to this one, zinc would rather lose electrons if they should ever react together. And that's how we obtain our table that we had earlier on. And now, of course, the question is, where do we move from here or how do we use that? And that brings me to another topic. So let me just summarize for you quickly. So far, we've met the structure of the galvanic cell. We now know the different parts. We also know cell notation is simple. Two parts, salt bridge, two parts. Normally, it is on the left-hand side is our oxidizing or reducing agent, the ones that will lose electrons is the, let me hear, lose electrons, reducing agent. And our oxidizing agent is, of course, the one that will gain electrons on the right-hand side. So, what I want to say, now that we know our galvanic cell and we know how we get those values and we know what is happening, what the negatives and the positives mean, let's do a quick calculation to see how we find the cell potential, that means the electropotential of the one side, the electropotential of the other side, add them together, and I get the complete cell potential. Here goes. Please watch. You should know this very well in the examination. 
So now we're going to calculate the cell potential, or also called the electromotor force of the cell. That means the two half cells. The zinc that gives the electrons, the copper that receives the electron. So I write it, the E naught value, or the electrode potential, sorry, the cell potential, that zero means that it was taken at standard conditions, 25 degrees Celsius, uh, one mole concentration, and if it's a gas, at one atmosphere. So for this cell, I have to have two half cells, the reduction half cell value, and the oxidation of cell value, which I read of the tables. Wow, wow, wow. Before I go on, let me just go and get my table out for you. On the whiteboard here, I have my table, and I normally use table 4B, and I will quickly, if we enlarge a little bit, a little bit more, and then I'll see, I read up here, and I see where is zinc? Where is, there we go, there is zinc lying there, and I see 0, 0,76, do you see it? and zinc is being oxidized, therefore zinc is a reducing agent, so I know this column is my reducing agent. So that's the one value I have, then I go lower down and I go to copper 2, and here I am at copper 2 now. Copper 2 is, he gains electrons, he is reduced, he is the oxidizing agent, so all oxidizing agents are lying on this side, so copper his value is 0, 0,16. Is that copper 2? Am I seeing it right? Yes, yes, yes. No, yes, another one. Copper 2, yes, this is the one I'm referring to. Copper 2 is 0, 0,34. That one over there. Now, please check with your teacher when to take that one and when to take that one, but it's basically about the number of electrons that come free. Back to my screen so that we can see exactly how we calculate. So now I want to find out if I put those half two cells together, what is the energy between them? that I measure in volts. First of all, there's the value of which one again? The copper one, the value of the copper one. The reduction side minus the value plus its sign of the oxidation side and I get an answer of 0, 1, 1. But what happens if the examiner doesn't ask that part of me but he gives me one of these and I must find the other one, like this. Let's say uh, they tell me the cell potential is 0, 0,76. The cell potential for the entire cell, not the half cell, not the half cell, that is 0, 0,76. And they tell me I am using the standard electropotential. That is 0, that means the hydrogen one. There they say the reduction of that one, which means I'm using the standard hydrogen electrode now, and that is zero. You've seen it in red on my screen. And then I must find the unknown. Obviously then, I take that zero over and I get 0, 0,76. I multiply by minus one, I get a positive, and a minus 0, 0,76. The positive anode is 0, 0,76. And I look on my table. Can I just show you on my table? So I will look on 0, 0,76, I go down here, 0, 0,76, I don't even know where I am, and I look across and I see it's zinc, the negative tells me it wants to lose electrons, so it must go in that direction, that means oxidation direction, and then I can see my reducing agent therefore is zinc, and that's my answer on the, on my table. Good. Now. Now that we've done the calculation and you know how to find either one or perhaps two of the electrode potentials and the cell potential, I think we need to look at equilibrium in cells. Equilibrium, but you will say, where does this come from? Equilibrium is there in rates of reactions and chemical change and Le Chatelier's principle. Yes, this is a chemical reaction and we can use it here. Try to follow me. And let me know whether you got it or not. And then if I do see you on Saturday at Kells River, then we can talk about this again. Here goes. Let's look at what I have for you. Equilibrium occurs in the galvanic cells, and this you'll find on page 929 of your telematics book. And what this simply means is that if I take one half cell, like the zinc one, the zinc dissolves, give off electrons, but electrons can't move, so electrons come back, 
So the zinc dissolves, gives off electrons. So we're in the forward direction. But if electrons can't move out, electrons come back, add up with that one, and go in that direction and give me back my zinc. But what now if I introduce a second salt? Now this one wants to grab. This is the oxidizing agent, and he wants to grab electrons, and I'm disturbing this equilibrium of the cell now. So I'm introducing a disturbance. Copper ions. Copper ions are introduced. And what happens now? Now we get a forward reaction. The reaction is now moving from left to right. The left to right reaction is favored in this direction. In other words, from there to there. And we get a voltage of 1,1. Which is the maximum from zero volt it moves from nothing to one comma one. Now, as the cell is operating and we're just making we're just making copper and we're getting more and more zinc uh, ions. So we get more of this from there, and we get more of this from there. Then what happens? During the operation now, which one is increasing? Of course, this one is increasing, becoming more and more and more, although a salt bridge can help. And this one, these ions are decreasing because we're using it up. We're producing and we're using these. Now, the Chatelier's principle, the Chatelier's principle says, if you increase anything on this side, that one or this one, then your reaction will tend to go in the opposite direction to get rid of that one that you have increased. So what have we increased? We've increased the zinc ions. There we increase the zinc ions, and now we find, and we've also decreased this, so we must fill this gap again. So we find the reaction will now tend to go from right to left, so we'll now be moving in this direction. What does that mean? We're moving from a very high cell potential and now we're moving slowly as the reaction progresses to zero. Therefore, later on we reach another equilibrium, I'll show you now now, and then the cell potential is nothing in this direction and nothing in that direction because the forward and reverse reactions are the same. So the cathode is zero potential, the anode is zero potential, and our total cell is zero potential, and we say the battery or the cell is flat. Hey, uh, learners, I'm sure it's almost the first time that you've heard about these things, not so. But let me show it to you in a different way, and perhaps you'll grasp it better. Let's go. Here we have it now. We have a problem for you. We say that the EMF, or the cell potential of a copper zinc cell or any other cell that you can calculate decreases the emf that means from 1 comma 1 to 0 decrease during operation use a graph to explain why this happens now we say yes my graph what do you read from here what is happening here what is happening here as time progresses and what does this graph talk about the concentration of these and the concentration of those and what state do we get here at point B? Now, we then say when the circuit is complete, that means the electrons are moving and the current flows, two things happen. The zinc ion concentration increases. We're producing that. And the copper ion, which is in solution, becomes copper and they decrease. What does that mean? That the rate of the forward reaction, forward reaction will decrease coming down, and the reverse reaction will increase. What do we get now? What do you call the state again? According to Le Chatelier, what do you call that state? The cell potential will decrease to zero, it's equilibrium there, and then as it goes on, the cell potential will come down, remember, from 1,1 1, 1 to zero, and then I then say that the battery is flat. Please draw this graph in your mind again. Try and reason it out with any other cell that you can choose or questions that you've seen and see whether you can actually answer such a question.